Hello. In this quick demo, I'm going to show how you can register an MCP server with your MCP client, and that MCP server is actually secure by all zero. Um, in the comments, there is a documentation for all the details you need to do um, to basically build your own MCP server and secure by all zero. This is just the end result, so you can see how things work once it's connected and secure by all zero. So in this demo, I created my bank MCP server. So it's a my bank. It's a bank that provides services um, through their APIs. So they created the MCP server so their client can integrate it to uh, their AI agent. So in this demo, I'm using Cloud. Um, so we'll be registering that service through Cloud. So in the demo, there is a couple of services I'm going to use. This is very simplistic view. The details is in the documents. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Cloud. I have the URL for my bank MCP server. So I'll register this inside Cloud. And then there is four services I'll show in the next slide. Um, two of them will require to call the backend APIs of the bank. One of them will be using Thompson Call Client Credential Flow. So there is a client ID and client secret will be saved inside the MCP server to call this APIs and return result to the client. And the other one using Thompson Call Token Exchange, which means um, when the MCP client first authenticate, they receive a token from us zero. We can use that token to exchange it with other API token. So you either can initiate a new token using client credential flow or or exchanging the existing one um, with uh, other API tokens. You can use either or, or you can mix between the two use cases. And I discussed this in detail in my document. Um, the service that um, this MCP server will provide are four. The first one is to return your bank name. So this is very like a hello world service. So basically does not call any API and it will just return um, your bank name. The second one is get my email. So basically um, in this one, once the MCP client authenticate was all zero, they receive a token. This token cannot call any API. It's, this is just a token to say that the MCP client is authenticated with the server. I'm gonna use that token to basically get from all zero the user email and then return it back to um, the customer who's using this uh, MCP server. The last two is where I'm calling the API. So the first one I'm calling get balance APIs to get my account balance. And then this one I'm using the client credential flow. And the next one is the transfer money. I'm using the token exchange, which is basically I'm using the first token that the MCP client received, exchange it with the API token and use it for money transfer. So let's see how that work. Um, so I do have here the MCP server. So I'm going to copy this. And the first thing happened behind the scene is when you actually go, and this is already secure by all zero, and I need to register my server with my client, which is Claude in this time. The first thing happened, there's something called dynamic client uh, registration happens with all zero. So it goes to all zero and said, do you have a client that represent this server? Uh, so I can actually request token on their, on using that client. And if the server said no, there is a standard now called DCR where dynamically create a client um, in all zero for Cloud to be able to use it in the future. So if I went to the admin console here, you can see under application, um, I don't have any, um, client got created for uh, my uh, my client now. So let's just register the client first and see how that works. So I'm going back to my browser here and I'm gonna go under my name and I'm gonna register my server. So I'm gonna click on connectors and I'm gonna add custom one and I'm gonna name it my bank. And here's the URL for my server that I developed. And I'm gonna add that here and I'm gonna click add, and now I'm just registering my clients. And until now, I did not connect this client to this, uh, so I did not connect Claude to my bank yet, it's still disconnected. And to connect it, I need to actually click here and start the connection. So when I click this, it's gonna actually send me to an auth zero page um, to authenticate. 
And you can see behind the scene here, if I went back to the R0 page, and I'm just going to refresh this, you can see there is dynamically a client got created. So this way I can authenticate this client against R0 right now. So anyway, I can use a saved user or I can sign up for a new one. I'm actually going to sign up for a new one now. So I'm going to click sign up. I'm going to add a new user. All right. Sorry, I'm just going to um, my password. Sure. All right. And I'm going to click continue. And that account got created. And now it's going to tell me, uh, do you consent to send this information to clouds? So we want to share your profile information with Claude. Do you consent to do this? And I'm going to say yes, accept. So what's going to happen behind the scene is when Claude trying to call the server, they can actually get the user information. This is actually one of my API. And you can see here, if I went to configure, those are the services that my server offer to, um, to uh, Claude here. Um, every time you're going to use that server, it can ask you for permission. Just for the demo, I'm just going to allow all of them to be unsupervised. So you can see how that will work. So I'm going to do all of them unsupervised and I'm going to close this. And also I have the server running here. So I have the API. So you, we're going to see the, uh, some logs here. So the first one I'm going to use is get the banking email, uh, name. So that's actually does not require any API call. I'm just calling the server, ask for my bank name and it will respond back to me. So I said, hey, please give me bank name, All right? So Cloud is gonna go back and it's gonna say, this is probably um, one of the servers, the bank name. So now it's actually calling the bank name for me and it should supposed to return me back my bank name, All right? Sometime Cloud took a little bit of time to call this API, but if, uh, if it takes a little delayed, I'm gonna actually have to uh, uh, request it again. So let's see. Uh, right, so it's actually the client responded here, so it should actually respond back. If not, I'm gonna request it again. So I'm gonna actually do it one more time here and said, please try again to get my bank name. All right, and I'm gonna send this to Claude and Claude He's gonna try this to do it again. So it's calling the server. All right, they're having. Um, let's try one, one last time. There you go. So actually return back my bank name. Sometime um, Claude actually just because this is a, a low uh, registration takes time to call this API. So return back my bank name. And now I was able to call the server and get my bank name, All right? The next one is get my email. And in this one, they're actually gonna call Auth0 API with the receive token to get my email. So I'm gonna say, please for this bank, me my email. All right, so it's now calling this bank and you can see it responded back was my email that I registered with. And you can see here on the API call, it actually used the uh, MCP client access token to call the N, um, user info endpoints and all zero responded back with my profile. Um, just Cloud took my email and display. That's basically what happened. Now I'm gonna actually do money transfer. I'm sorry, my get account balance. Account balance gonna actually require an API access token. So um, let's do that and see how that works. So I'm gonna say, okay, please transfer. I'm um, sorry, uh, please get my account balance. Right, and let's see, actually, this is, I forgot to put the account number. So uh, it's gonna tell me I need the five digit for the account number. So I'm gonna, then, so I'm gonna send that. And then it's gonna actually call now 
the API. So you can see there's a gate balance API. They're calling it with the account number that I provided and it should send back the account balance. So let's see when that comes. And here is just send me the account balance from the API. So let's see what happened behind the scenes. So if I went back to my logs, you can see here, I got a new access token from Oz0 to call this API. And that's the actually new access token that I received. This access token, actually the server saved it just in case I need to call this API again. It won't ask Oz0 for a new token for this API. So if I come here and said, uh, please check the balance again. I would actually, you can see here what's going to happen behind the scene is going to say existing access token now from Oz0. So it, it did not ask for a new access token because that access token already initiated through client credential flow still valid. So they used it to call the API and send it back. Now we're going to do the um, money transfer. So money transfer use... Um, uh, token exchange. So basically it would use the existing MCP uh, token, exchange it with the API for uh, money transfer. So let's let's actually um, try that. So I'm going to say, please transfer money from this account to the one, two, right? Oh, I forgot the amount. It's probably going to ask me for that amount now. So I'm going to say how much you want to do it. I'm going to say, let's do $20. All right. So now it's going to actually take all this data and it's going to call my API with this data, the account number receiver sender and the amount. And now it's actually calling the API and we're waiting until it respond back. And let's see here behind the scene. And again, as I said, sometimes cloud takes a little bit of time. We can actually uh, ask it again. Let's do this. Right, so now it's going to try the transfer again for me. All right, so it's a tool execution field. Let's see what's happening. So it did not reach, Cloud did not even reach here. It comes in. Try one more time. Let's see here. Yep, here you go. You can see the new exchange token received. And now it's going to actually use it and actually got me the confirmation from my API back. So I'm going to say now, so now this is a new exchange token. The server does not need to get a new one because this token is still valid. So I'm going to try to do another transfer. So I'm going to say, please do another transfer for $60. So it's going to call again the same API. Another transfer, would, would you like to transfer? Yes. All right, so it's, again, it's gonna go with the same accounts and it's gonna do it. And again, did the transfer got me the confirmation code here. And if I went back to my um, logs, you can see it used the ex existing token exchange to call this API for me. All right. That concludes my demo. Um, I do have a whole documentation that talks about how you can create that demo, how you can set up, how you connect it to Auth0. This is going to be all in the comment section. So um, yeah, you can follow this um, document and let me know if you have a question. Thanks.